of them. We did an interview with a journalist in Los Angeles. She said, well, what's next for Sparks? And then we said, oh, well, we're going to be working with Giorgio Moroder on our next album. She said, oh, that's funny. Giorgio didn't mention that to me. I'm really good friends with him. And we went, uh, uh, the gulp. Because it was a total lie. Didn't know how to contact Giorgio. And then she said, well, I could introduce you. Surprisingly to us, up for the challenge of working with a, you know, a band. It really was pretty brave of them. We did the recordings in Los Angeles. Interesting studio because it was totally electronic with a massive amount of Moog modular and Roland synthesizers and thousands of sounds. We were aware that we were kind of reinventing ourselves as we were making that, but we knew that we were doing something that was totally new. For me as a fan, it would be hard to know if it's willful or if it's the innocence of, wouldn't it be a great idea if we just made a synthesizer record in 1979, before the 80s? Nice, it's open, nice. if spirit to just do something that we thought was really fresh sounding, and we think it was something really special, recorded before a label wanted to sign it. Someone at Virgin Records in Germany saw the tape sitting there and said, hmm, Sparks, Giorgio Moroder, let me give that a listen. And he said, this is pretty amazing, and shipped it off to Richard Branson and company in, in the UK, and they agreed. When Number One in Heaven came out, it was two years after the massive failure of introducing, and you kind of seen the DNA of so much of what would come later on. This was probably one of the first electro pop dance records of all time. That to me was such an astounding record. It seemed really audacious. It just takes you on this incredible hypnotic trip. Just belied and denied anything else that was happening. It just rose above it. We, we were already big Marauder fans, but this combination it was just perfect. That's why I ended up working with Vince, because those synths, they just drove me. Set a template. I became first aware of Sparks in the 1979 period. Just seeing them on like Top of the Pops around that time, you know, it's a very sort of stark, dynamic image. Russell singing, Ron on the synths. He had his 79 kind of hipster hair. Sparks and the new single called Beat the Clock. I think it was real great. Here's myself. Uh, there's the guy from the Pet Shop Boys. There's the guy from Duran Duran. I mean, we're all miserable fuckers, you know. It's a look, isn't it? Which we just stole from Sparks. <laughs>